Welcome to this video in which we will find the Norton's equivalent circuit for a bridge network, in fact for the bridge network shown in the picture. Um, hopefully uh, you'll recall from the introductory video on the Norton equivalent circuits, we're looking for a circuit that looks like this, a current source in parallel with the resistor. The resistance we call RTH because it's the same as the Thevenin equivalent resistance and we need to find the short circuit current. So the steps involved in doing this are to find RTH and ISC. Uh, we'll find uh, RTH in two ways. The first way is we'll find the open circuit voltage and then the short circuit current and then RTH is VOC over ISC and then uh, the other way we'll find it is we'll actually just find the equivalent resistance um, for RTH and uh, since we'll have already have found ISC we'll have the Norton equivalent circuit as well. So to begin with we need to find the open circuit voltage. Okay so we are finding the Norton equivalent with respect to these two terminals. So the first thing we need to do is find the open circuit voltage across these two terminals. Well, how do we do that, you might ask? Uh, well, you'll notice that we have from here to here uh, 10 volts and that with the circuit between the terminals open that I basically have this 350 ohm resistor and this 350 ohm resistor are in series and so I can use a voltage divider to get the voltage across this, in, this resistor here and in fact when I do that uh, let's call this say V1 we have V1 is going to be uh, 350 ohms over 350 plus oops, ohms 350 ohms times 10 volts which we work out to be 5 volts. Uh, the same thing goes for this other branch between here and here I have that the 350 ohm resistor and the 400 ohm resistor are in series so if I define this voltage here as V2, I have then that V2 will be um, 400 ohms over 350 ohms plus 400 ohms times 10 volts, which when I calculate this one out, I get... that this is 5.33 volts. Okay, and so the way I've defined this, my open circuit voltage is um, V1 minus V2. That is the voltage from here to here is the voltage from here to here minus the voltage from here to here. And when I work that out, I get then minus three or minus 0.33 volts. Okay, so I've now got the open circuit voltage. Let's see if we can find the short circuit current. This is going to get a bit trickier. Okay, so I bring up a clean version of the um, circuit, and now I want to short these two terminals and find the short circuit current. Okay, well <clears throat> how am I going to do that? Uh, it turns out that uh, there's a couple things we could do which um, I think what we'll do well if I knew the current going through this 350 ohm resistor, let's call that I1 
And if I knew the current going through this 400 ohm resistor, let's call that I2, then I could apply uh, Kirchhoff's current law to this point, and I would have I1 plus ISC is equal to I2. So if I can figure out what um, I1 and I2 are, we can solve this equation then for ISC. So the way I think I'll do this is the following. I will come up with an equivalent resistance for the top half of the network, an equivalent resistance for the bottom half of the network, and use those to give me the voltage from here to here. And I guess let's just call this V1. So the idea is we'll solve for the voltage. Uh, everything here is at the same voltage, so we'll solve for that voltage. We'll call it V1. And then once we know what V1 is, we can get I1, because it's going to be 10 volts minus V1 over 350. We can get I2, it's V1 over 400, and that gives us ISC. So I can redraw this circuit to make it clear what I want to do as follows. I have 10 volts, and I have then a 350 ohm resistor, another 350 ohm resistor. These guys are connected. 350 ohms, 400 ohms, and these guys are connected. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, this resistor and this resistor, put them in parallel, and get an equivalent resistance. I'll then take this resistor and this resistor, put those in parallel and get an equivalent resistance. And from that I'll have a voltage divider which gives me V1. Okay, so the uh, 350 in parallel with 350 gives me uh, 175 ohms. If I have two resistances in parallel that have the same resistance, then the par equivalent parallel resistance is just half their resistance. 350 in parallel with 400 gives me this one I'll have to work out. It's going to be 350 times 400 divided by 350 plus 400, which then gives me an equivalent resistance of 186.5 seven ohms. Okay, so what that means is, well, just to make it clear, this computation here corresponds to these two guys. Okay, so now I can redraw my circuit as the following. I have 10 volts 175 180, oops, 6.67. And now I need to find this voltage which I've called V1. So V1 will be 186.67 over 186.67 plus 175 times 10 volts which, when I work this guy out, gives me 5.67 This gives me that V1 is 5. 
161 volts. Okay. Knowing this, I can now find I1. It's going to be 10 volts minus 5.161 volts over 350 ohms. And when I compute this, I get... I get a long time to compute this. I get that I1 is equal to 13.83 milliamps. And then I2, here we'll clear out a little bit of space for I2. I2 will be 5.161 volts over 400 ohms, which when I compute this guy, gives me 12.0 nine zero milliamps. Okay, so from this we can compute the short circuit current ISC is going to be I2 minus I1 which gives me then uh, 12.9 milliamps minus 13 18.83 milliamps, which, when I work this guy out, is minus 0.93 milliamps. Okay, so that gives us the short circuit current. How exciting. Now, all we need to do is go back to our original page. We have the open circuit voltage. The short circuit current was minus 0.93 milliamps. The open circuit voltage was, uh, let's do this in the proper color was minus 0.33 volts, so R Thevenin is minus 0.33 volts divided by minus 0.93 milliamps, which is equal to 354.8 ohms. So there we have it. The Norton equivalent circuit here is going to be a current source uh, with negative 0.93 milliamps and a Thevenin equivalent resistance of 354.8 ohms. Okay, so the thing that we haven't done yet is computed the Thevenin equivalence directly by looking at the equivalent resistance of the circuit. And since I'm out of time on this video, we'll do that in the next video.